Hey everyone, I'm Mara. I'm Spencer, and we're Married with Board Games. I have a secret to disclose. I don't like sports. I've never enjoyed physical activity, and there's just no appeal for me to watch it either. But I don't mind a little physical activity in board games. Well, lucky for Spencer, we've had the opportunity to play and review Zoo Ball, a dexterity game for two or four players from Osprey Games. But I'm curious to find out what you think of this fictional sport after playing the tabletop version. Well, let's take a look at how it plays, and then I'll divulge all. <laughs> All right, so zoo ball. Uh, the playing surface is this mat that's it's kind of like a felt, but uh, it's folded up and put inside that box. So when you lay it down, you really have to work to, to to flatten out those creases. Now this is a two or four player game. I've set up for a two player game, and I'll show you the four player game here in a second. But essentially, the teams are made up of four different animal pieces, and they're these wooden round wooden pieces. Um, and you can, it comes with stickers that you have to put on yourself and you can customize the teams however you want to. You can put whichever animals you want on whichever color. It does give you examples of what you can do, but you are free to customize it however you want to. But the colors are red, white, black, and blue. Your teams are made up of three blockers, so they're the ones with the white background. And then you've got a score, the one with the yellow background. Your goal is to get your score in the other team's goal. So in a two-player game, you're just going directly across. So I'm trying to get my rabbit score over here uh, into that circle over there. In order to score, you need to completely clear the white line for it to count. In a two-player game, the goal is to get the first to get to three points. On your turn, you can either move your blockers or your scorer. You can move as many of your blockers as you want. Um, and the way you move is you just simply flick like that. You can't move your blockers and your scorer on the same turn though. If I want to move my scorer, that would be it for me on that turn. You can use your blockers to push your scorer forward if you want to, uh, or knock the other scorer out of the way. It's really, there really aren't many rules on what you can and can't do with your pieces. There are some specific rules on if you go off the mat, where you put your pieces back on in relation to where they left. So. Check those out in the rules. But that's essentially the game. Flick and then try to score three times. In a four player game, all the rules are essentially the same. Instead though, you're trying to get your scorer into the diagonally adjacent goal. So for the blue team, I wanna get my score into the red triangle. White team wants to get their score in the black. You get the idea. However, in a four player game, it's the first to one point that wins. So you have to be strategic about not only when to score for yourself, but also to keep everybody else from scoring on their intended goals. However, the same rules apply as far as you can either only move your blockers or your score on your turn. All right, quick and easy walkthrough of that. That's it, that's <laughs> so, it. Uh, then let's get to it. Okay, let's do it. All right, so starting off with the artwork, mm -hmm. um, I know that pretty much all you're getting with the artwork is the little discs, yeah. but I mean, they. They made it fun. fun. Well, and the, the artwork in the rule book is fun, and you know it's it's cutesy, I guess you could say. So I, I think it's perfect for the game. Right, and and like I mentioned when we talked about this game on our podcast, mm -hmm. it makes me think of um, there's a scene in Bed Knobs and Broomsticks, um, a really fun movie that uh, they're playing a soccer game, and it's all the diff these different animals from of the animal kingdom, mm -hmm. and. And I think, and this really makes me think of that. Well, and, and on that note, I think it's a, a really fun concept too. Mm -hmm. You've got teams of animals that basically, when you when you're putting the game together, you can customize. You can go with the suggested, you know, which is which animals are part of which team, or you can, you know, mix and match however you want. I try to do kind of like. Um, when I put the stickers on, I put like all Arctic style animals together okay. and that kind of thing, and I put them all on the white uh, discs and that kind of thing. Okay. But, but I mean, it's cute. It really is a, a fun idea. Now mm -hmm. I will say though, I mentioned stickers. I hate putting stickers on. Mm -hmm. They, they give you a roll, a sheet of stickers and the, the discs are plain and you got to put the stickers on. And the reason why I say I hate putting stickers on is because I'm awful at it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tend to hate things I'm not good at, <laughs> which is why I don't like sports. Right? 
<laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I'm. There are many games I'm bad at that I love anyway. But as far as I just can never put those stickers on right, and so. I don't think you did a bad job on this. Well, one. thank you. Um, there are there are a few of them that are hanging over the side just a little bit. I did notice that a little bit, and so. Um, but thankfully, they're only on the top, so yeah. that won't be an issue of it hanging yeah. on it, the mat. It doesn't detract from the gameplay, but just a personal preference for me. I don't like putting stickers on. So I would have been just fine if Osprey had already put the stickers on for me, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, timeline, or the time frame to play this game, what do you think? Oh, it's so fast. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is another game that you can do back to back to back. Mm -hmm. um, especially when you're, well, I mean, for the most part, when you're doing a four-player game, we've played we played several four-player games back to back just because you're only going to one point mm -hmm. in that game. However, our last match, oh. I think that's when everybody really got the hang of it uh -huh. and understood what was going on. It became an, it was like a brouhaha, man. I mean, everybody was going after each other and it was taking a while to yeah. let anybody score. <laughs> but, but at its core, it's, it's pretty, a pretty quick game. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and, and especially because it is so simple to explain, I think that adds to it. Exactly. So because it is so simple, there's not a lot of, you know, mechanisms or rules, and there's not a lot of pieces, really. It doesn't get bogged down in any of that, the extraneous stuff. Oh, definitely. So it's perfect for a nice, quick, dexterity game. Mm -hmm. um, another, another comment on the physical aspect of the game is the mat itself. Mm -hmm. I love the surface. It's a great surface. They picked a very good material for mm -hmm. it um, so that it is easy to slide on. Those pieces, those discs slide fantastic on that mat. I know. I, I compare it to playing shuffleboard. Um, not like the old, not like what you think mm -hmm. of people old people on a <laughs> cruise ship you know with the big giant sticks uh -huh. like i'm thinking you know the the table with yeah. the metal discs that you slide on mm -hmm. it like that's what i think of when with playing on this surface it's a mm -hmm. great smooth surface but but there is a but yes the problem is that surface has to fit inside this box and so it's folded mm -hmm. and it's got creases in it mm -hmm. and so try as you might as much as you try to flatten that out there's still found, creases there's still, yeah. when you play, um, which lead to kind of like ramps <laughs> or does. jumps. And I, oh man, I was trying so bad. Spencer was asking me to film while we played it so we could get a good little boomerang mm -hmm. video. And I put the phone down at the wrong time. Yeah. It was a little bit later. Spencer did a great flick. That it oh went, man, I tell you, I tell you what, like I was ski jump. I was I headed mean, straight for this group of players. It was going to be awesome, and I just went <laughs> right over it, off the table, <laughs> sailing. I mean, and I fell on the ground in disappointment. And unfortunately, <laughs> it's because of that. And he's yeah. not talking about his disc. He physically fell on the ground. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's because of those ramps. Yeah. Unfortunately. So I think there are ways that you can deal with that. I think what was the word of some of the things that you suggested? Well, I mean, you can get one of those hangers that yeah. has the spring action clips on yeah. it and hang it up that way. Mm -hmm. um, especially if you were to go so far as, um, you know, there are ways to iron, mm -hmm. even if they don't, if they say don't iron, that means you don't need to put the iron directly on it. Yeah, so we're not so, advocating, we're not telling you to iron because the rules explicitly say don't iron. Well, and it's a material <laughs> that you do not need to iron. Yeah. Don't wash this mm -hmm. material like that. I mean, like you might need to do some spot washing if you get it dirty, mm -hmm. but don't try like putting it through the washing machine and putting it through the, mm -hmm. and air drying it because that's not going to help either. Yeah. Um, you could possibly take some other material and lay it on top mm -hmm. um, and put your iron at a reasonably low setting and go over it that way maybe. Maybe. Um, I don't know. If you are willing to try that. I don't want to no. chance that on our... Well, and, and we've been able to deal with it. Like, it doesn't detract too much to where it's not fun. Right. We're still able to play with it yeah. with the creases on it just fine. I mean, they're not that bad that it's like impossible yeah. to play on it. I do wonder though over time after folding and unfolding, unfolding and unfolding over and over over again to see what that would do with it in the long run. I don't know. I guess we'll see. Um, it is an exciting game though. We talked oh about goodness. even, you know, even if it's going off the table, falling down. I mean, you just, you, we have to be careful about when we played this game because if it's at night when our kids are asleep, we got to keep it down. <laughs> Because you, you get all amped up. Spencer yeah. wouldn't know about that because he doesn't play sports, but naturally <laughs> gets amped up about it. 
<laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's fun. A lot of excitement going on, jumping out, cheering. Um, you really can get into this game. And it really does. It, it really depends on your involvement in the game. You could just be like, eh, I'm flicking a disc, whatever. No, get into the game. Well, it's fun. I think, honestly, though, a two-player game versus a four-player game, in a four-player game, you're going to get more excited yeah. about it and everything. Yeah, in a two-player game, you're probably going to be very more, much more reserved mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and trying to be... You know, thinking it out and strategic and whatnot, but in a four-player game, there's gonna be some trash talk. <laughs> oh yeah, it was some trash talking going on. <laughs> All sorts of fun stuff like that. But speaking of two-player, mm -hmm. four-player, yeah. Um, let's so talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So with the two-player, you're just you've got two goals, and then um, with a four-player, you know, you're trying to score a, a diagonal from you. So you're not only trying to score, but you're also to stop everyone else from scoring because that, it's the first to one point. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot, there's a completely different way of thinking there. Well, and it's very easy to get distracted from that person directly across from you. It is. Um, that you're so busy worrying about the other people and getting your person across that you might not be paying attention to their score or coming yeah. across to you. Yeah. And so you need to keep your defenders close by. And I was- Right, Spencer? <laughs> yes, you do. He likes to send his defenders yeah. out. Into the nether region. I mean, but, it's everywhere. Like you know, I was I was really fascinated at how different the two different games felt. They do. Well, um, and even today, you played with our four year old. Yeah. A two player game. Yeah. And it's, it's different. It really is. Um, you're still doing the same thing essentially, but the way you strategize, the way you put your pieces, you got to change the way you're thinking. Well, and because the goal is in a different location. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's out there in the middle, and. Um, you're just trying to cross the line, right? right? Mm -hmm. In a two-player game. Essentially, yeah. But in a four-player game, you have to be completely in the zone yeah. to score. And you're going right into that corner. Mm -hmm. and, and that can definitely change things up, um, even in your, how you're blocking. Right. Um, that happened to me a lot in our four-player game. Um, I would get over and be up against the end line and, where you would go out of bounds. And then my opponent would be able to set up his defenders just right. Mm -hmm. um, although I did get a really cool shot once on one of those ramps that yeah. um, I ended up jumping over his people. So we, you <laughs> obviously, really awesome. we've obviously talked about this game quite a bit. Um, so it's clear, uh, hopefully it'll be clear to you that to us, it's Zubal is an exciting, quick, and easy dexterity game that fills a niche we didn't know needed filling. While I might not ever enjoy getting onto the field in person, I definitely enjoy flicking discs around an arena. It's probably the closest I'll come to ever playing something akin to soccer or football. Zooball is a fun and sometimes chaotic dexterity game that is perfect to pull out when you don't want something that involves too many pieces or rules. It's an all-around enjoyable filler. It does lose some marks, though, for the implementation of the mat. The creases can present a problem or added challenge, I guess, if you choose to think of it that way. But for all those reasons, we give Zooball a rating of 7 and a seal of approval. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget you can listen to us talk about games and get some delicious ideas for Game Night Grub on the Married with Board Games podcast. Find us on your podcast platform of choice. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.